So this is just testing. We're about to go live in a minute and just getting ready for the camera to sync. It doesn't seem to be syncing. Uh, there we go. It's like a sinking ship. Uh, there's an early pun for everyone. So just welcome everyone with the chat. Right, 6.30. Let's get into it. So the camera seems to be going a little bit slow. Uh, episode 43, the live stream, uh, the Golf Rules Questions podcast. So I wanted to start off with answering the Golf Rules question of the week 42 which is, are you permitted free relief from a dot of paint that is marking a yardage on the fairway? The answer is, these are artificial objects. However, they are not obstructions. So there is no free relief unless the committee declares them to be ground under repair, local rule F21. Uh, where did I get that question from? I got that one straight out of... The definitions so in the definition section of obstructions uh, there's a there's an interpretation about paint dots paint on the ground so welcome to episode 43 we've just started with the golf rules question of the week 42 uh, welcome back everyone hope you enjoyed last week's live stream or if you didn't catch the live stream the uh, recording uh, or even just if you listened on the podcast uh, which i uploaded uh, i think saturday so i'll be doing the same again this saturday uh, if you don't uh, if you prefer to listen to the podcast rather than watch the live stream or watch the recording on youtube now, you're more than welcome to ask any questions you may have. Uh, there's the chat function in, in YouTube. Uh, but just wanted to thank everyone for the well wishes since hearing that I had left Golf Australia. Uh, I do have a, another job now, uh, so don't stress. Uh, it was time to move on and find some new challenges. And look, I was a bit hamstrung by the rules of golf content that I could push out. Um, it was conflict of interest uh, was thrown around. Um, so now I'm sort of going solo and more interested in going out and, rule, and running some rules workshops around Australia. Uh, so if you're interested or know of a club that would like a rules of golf workshop, even online, let me know, shout out. Um, you know, the ones in person are probably, you learn a lot more, especially the practical sessions. So doing one in a classroom is great, um, but the practical sessions out in the golf course uh, where you really learn. Uh, but, you know, during this time of lockdown, uh, just getting anything, uh, any assistance, uh, we... I can uh, take you through one of those. Right, now, as I said last week, we had a fair few videos uh, that we'd pumped out. So we're just catching up on, on those. Uh, we did four last week. We're going to do three today. This Now, this one here that I've put up about oh, five weeks ago was a... PGA Tour from the archive, uh, Jason Duffner duffs his putt. Pretty good pun there, the old duff. Uh, he was playing with Dustin Johnson in a four-ball type event. Uh, morning phrase, just see your uh, message there. Uh, Dustin and Jason Duffner were playing in a four-ball type event. Uh, he set up to hit his putt, and his putter slipped. Uh whether he let go or, or whatever, I, I don't know. But his part of slip hit the ball and caused it to move. Now, back then, as I said, this was a tour vault or an archive. 
Back then, that was a penalty of one stroke. Uh, and then you'd have to replace the ball. Now, because it was a four ball, Dustin had actually putted it up to a foot, marked his ball, walked away, and so he just replaced his ball, tapped it in for the for the par, and uh, and they moved on. So luckily there, otherwise Duff would have been putting for par from about 22 feet. So now the rule, 9.4, Rule 9.4, um, because it was accidental, uh, Duffner actually wouldn't, Jason wouldn't actually get a penalty in that situation. Uh, it was accidental movement on the green. Now, I did post uh, a similar situation from a tour of Alt on the LPGA tour uh, on Facebook this, uh, Facebook this week. And I had a lot of people saying, that's not a penalty anymore. I wasn't sure whether they just couldn't see that the ball wasn't on the green or they truly believe that there's no penalty if you accidentally cause your ball to move. So, A, the ball wasn't on the green. It was on the fringe, uh, which is the general area. Uh, the general area includes... Fairway and bung, uh, fairway, bung, fairway and rough. Okay, so she was just off the putting green, and she caused the ball to move in a sort of, you know, it it did kind of look like a stroke, but it wasn't. It was part of her pre-shot routine, and she knew it straight away. And she was apparently she was leading at the time, so she got the one-stroke penalty, and. Uh, had to replace her ball. It would still be a one-stroke penalty in replacing the ball today. But as we said with Duff, if that situation happened today, there would be no penalty and he'd just replace his ball. Uh, morning, Adrian. Or late evening for you two. Um, yeah, not quite midnight over there in the UK. Right, second ruling. Uh, John Rahm's ball moved on the green at the Open Championship. So the Open was about, again, about five weeks ago. Uh, unlike Duffner's situation, Rahm's ball was moved by the wind gravity. Now, usually, you would play the balls it lies when it has been moved by wind or what we call natural forces. Uh, but under Rule 13.1D, because Ram had already lifted and re replaced his ball, of course, marking it first, he was required to move it back. If he had not lifted and replaced it, he would just play it as it lies. So it's a specific situation for a ball on the green. If it is moved at all, it needs to be determined whether you had already lifted and replaced the ball. Uh, and I say course marking at first. 13.1D doesn't actually say marking, lifting, and replacing. It just says lifting and replacing. But if you don't mark it, um, then you're going to incur a one-stroke penalty if you just pick it up without marking it uh, on the green. Um, yeah, that's a, a specific situation uh, when it's on the green and it's cause to move if you've already lifted and replaced it it owns that spot so being moved by gravity or wind water it needs to be replaced being moved by an animal by yourself accidentally deliberately um, that wasn't part of a stroke then you just replace the ball uh, we have another one at the open championship you can all you can go and watch all of these videos uh, over at my youtube uh, subscribe. I think I've got this new join function there too. So if you want to sign up for a membership um, for the for a, the price of a cup of coffee a week, uh, you can you can be a member of the Golf Rules Questions YouTube, and you get a few a few little. Uh, it's only really small. Um, benefits out of that 
uh, for the price of, price of a cup of coffee. Um, but there are further benefits if you go up the up the levels. Now, getting back to Rory McIlroy at the Open Championship, he had his ball next to a massive television. Uh, this TV, of course, was showing the leaderboard and players out on the golf course. Uh, because Rory had an interference to both his line of play and line of sight from the TV, he was permitted to take free relief under local rule F23, temporary immovable obstructions. Okay. Uh, this is not a common local rule in club land, but certainly on every PGA tour, LPGA tour event and European tour event, there are temporary immovable obstructions and a lot of other um, professional tours as well would have immovable obstructions such as TV towers, grandstands. Um, the spectator roping is usually just movable obstruction uh, as are spectator signs. What else are... TV cables are movable obstructions unless they're in the ground. Then it's a GUR situation. Uh, I think I've covered it. TV towers, let or leaderboards that aren't TV, uh, aren't televisions. Uh, there's probably a few more. Uh, so because his ball was in the general area, he would get relief, or his relief area had to be in the general area. Now. TIOs, uh, because they're uncommon, uh, people don't quite understand how they work, which is fair enough. Uh, basically, you've got a TIO, and then you add, you get to add a club length onto that edge. That or It's the, usually the nearest edge, but some local rules change it uh some com uh, committees change it so that it says you it says you can choose either side. Um, that's not always the case, but uh, for some tours it is. And from that either side, from the nearest side or either side, um, you add a club length. That's basically saying, okay, this TIO is an extra club length wider than it actually is. And from that extra club length, you get to drop within a club length. Okay, so uh, the common saying is more than one, less than two. Um, they have made a good change to the TIO local rule, which was to, oh, you can just proceed under rule 16.1 for an immovable obstruction if you wish. So you, if you've just got interference with your swing, but you really like the lie, or, or the area that you're about to drop within, you can just take sort of, you know, a little bit of relief, uh, nearest point of complete relief, rather than that uh, more than one, less than two situation. So you get to choose whether you're going to treat it as a immovable obstruction or a TIO. If you tre treat it as an IO, as an immovable obstruction, you don't get the line of sight, line of play relief. So just be careful about that if you ever come across that situation. Uh, or more likely if you're going to be refereeing in that kind of situation. Now, uh, that was the three rulings from... <laughs> I need to get Roscoe back so I draw it out. But uh, that was the three rulings uh, that I wanted to talk about this week. Next off, we have the Ivers from last week. Um, I kind of re-listened to myself and there were, a f um, yeah, f I couldn't throw out the words uh, like, the, you know, I needed a dictionary or a thesaurus in front of me. Um, I had a few people telling me pedantic was the word I was missing, which is thank you very much. Uh, I always get a little bit tongue-tied. Uh, but I had two massive Ivers last week. Massive. They were massive, like seriously massive. Um, the fact that I kept saying D7 for when Bubba replaced his club rather than G9, which it is the correct 
um, the correct local rule. Uh, afterwards, when I found that out, that uh, made me go all red. Uh, but yeah, G9 is what a committee can adopt uh, for replacing your club. D7 is that new local rule that a club can bring in if a player's ball after a putt on the... It's like a, a modification of rule 11.1. Uh, after a putt or a shot on the green, um, if it hits a player, hits a club that they just used or an animal known as also known as a loose impediment, such, an, such as an ant or a worm, uh, D7, if the D7 is adopted, then you don't cancel the stroke. Uh, the stroke is not cancelled. You just play on, play as it lies. So big over there. And the other one was the lovely picture behind me um, of the Dunes uh, golf course down on the Mornington Peninsula was designed by Tony Cashmore, not Tom Doak, as I had mentioned, which was uh, yeah, a shocker there. Uh, and now we get into Golf Rules Question of the Week, episode 43. Here we go. 16 minutes in, I'm already getting into the Golf Rules Question of the Week. In agreeance, this is number 43, in agreeance, a player and their opponent stop their match due to the weather conditions. They agree to return the next day and start at 8 a.m. Firstly, is this permitted? Are a player and their opponent permitted to agree to stop their match due to the weather conditions? And secondly, do they continue from where they stopped or do they restart their match from hole one? Um, no guessing on the chat, guys. You can uh, send me a message about that one. That was GRQ OTW 43. In a grants, a player and their opponent stopped their match due to the weather conditions. They agreed to return the next day and start at 8 a.m. Is that permissible? And do they continue from where they stopped or do they restart their match from hole one? Right, that was 43, 17 minutes. Bang. <laughs> nice and early start to the, to the morning or uh, late finish to the evening for some. Right, we have, let's turn it over to questions. So if you've got any questions, fire away with the live chat. So I've got Justin Wright. Can you rotate or align a ball without marking it after lifting your marker? Great question. Great question, Justin. No. The answer is no. Can you retain a look? If you want to touch your ball, it must be marked. Um, and then are you allowed to mark it and touch it in the first place? So if you're in the fairway, um, you're less likely to be allowed to uh, touch your ball. But let's say you're on the green, which is I'm assuming that is where you where you mean. Um, if you take the as soon as you take the marker away, you would not be permitted to touch your ball. So that would be under rule nine point four. Okay. Any other questions? Everyone's a bit quiet this week. So I guess this is the this is the part where I learn how to pad pad it out for uh, for anyone else who wants to speak up. I uh, hope everyone has enjoyed this quick little Golf Rules Questions 43. Uh, it's no longer the, the 40, 50 an hour uh, time that it used to be. Uh, but hopefully you learnt, you learnt enough to take away or, you know, if you have further questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask me. So hopefully that asked answered your question justin um whoever has the answer for episode 43 grq otw uh, email it through to me and also i should mention that i just sent out the drop zone episode two this morning so that's a newsletter that i'm doing weekly uh, just a fun little newsletter uh, not too much to it and 
and uh yeah so hopefully if you didn't get that uh send me an email golfrules.questions at gmail.com and uh, i'll sign you up or just go to my website and uh, should be able to sign up there uh, but i'll just go and check that out but uh, the drop zone quick little newsletter um detailing fun little rule and uh, and there we go that uh, is golf rules questions podcast 43 yeah adrian get some uh, questions ready for me next time that's that's a great idea uh, i'm not even sure I, I like this time slot but uh, i might try some different time slots you might be asleep uh rightio so thank you everyone uh, thank you everyone for joining in and enjoy your day or if you're in the uk enjoy your sleep